Last week, Atomus announced the Ninja 5 Plus and Ninja Stream, and this week they gave us a little more information. And I really do mean a little. We weren't overly surprised to hear about the Ninja 5 Plus. It follows a normal product release cycle that most manufacturers subscribe to. Research, productize, release, research, upgrade, release, repeat. The Ninja 5 Plus looks set to be a great tool, what with 8K 30p ProRes RAW recording available. But it does come in at almost three times the price of a Ninja 5, so users will probably expect more functionality. Maybe more than has already been announced, but Atomos do have a strong history of providing firmware updates that enable great new features to their products, and for the most part, at no additional cost. I'm sure we'll see some exciting capabilities added to the Ninja 5 Plus in time. For now though, support for 8K 30p and 4K 120p comes at a premium. Firstly, the only camera that you're going to get 8K 30p with initially is the Canon R5, pretty much as predicted. Canon is Atomus's launch partner with the Ninja 5 Plus, so it makes sense. And Atomus CEO Jeremy Young is challenging other camera makers to get their next generation up and running, with the Ninja range now ready to accept high resolution RAW sensor data with the new Ninja 5 Plus. The same is true for high frame rates. 4K 120p works with the Sony FX6 and FX9 over SDI RAW with the Ninja 5 Plus Pro Kit, but only the Z2 Ecamm models work over HDMI. So hopefully there'll be mirrorless cameras coming out soon that can utilize this high frame rate 4K support. There was a sweeping declaration that buying the Ninja 5 Plus would future-proof users for the next five years. So users paying a premium now will have to wait to see what other benefits will come to their hardware, as Atomos haven't set any expectations at this time. Our view is that buying a Ninja 5 Plus is a solid investment for content creators. By utilizing a new generation chip, Atomos will be able to further exploit the power that they have inside the Ninja 5 Plus over time. Atomus made important references to their chipset developments and technological achievements that are now ready to start ushering in a new generation of products over the next year or so, with Ninja 5 Plus and the Ninja Stream beginning that process. This is where things get a little strange. There's been plenty of speculation about an Atomus streaming monitor recorder for a while. We were, in fact, expecting something to be announced late last year, but it's out now and we're happy, except that's not strictly true. First, a bit of product info. The Ninja Stream is designed to do exactly what its name suggests, stream a video feed over an internet connection. Where it becomes powerful is how it achieves that and the scope it can cover. Accepting an input over HDMI from cameras, computers, or pretty much any HDMI-enabled device, Ninja Stream is incredibly versatile with the ability to accept multiple video streams as Jeremy Young demonstrated. The Ninja Stream can also output to a number of codecs simultaneously, H.264, 265, ProRes, not RAW, and it can deliver that at up to 10-bit 42 HDR over Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or even directly to streaming platforms such as YouTube. It's also possible to connect third-party cellular dongles over USB-C for direct access to streaming platforms with the Ninja Stream without any computer. So we can stream up to 4K 10-bit 42 HDR over a local Wi-Fi connection or online, which is great. There's also a Ninja Stream app which allows local Wi-Fi's to stream content to phones or a tablet. The rationale for this is crystal clear, a production environment under the COVID pandemic. You can have your director, producer, and other stakeholders watching what your cameras see without being anywhere near it. And using the live streaming functionality, you can send that stream anywhere in the world. So conceivably, I could be shooting on an Icelandic cliff with my director in a warm cafe and my producer sat in LA, all seeing the same feed, which is pretty amazing. But, and this is a big but, the reason for the Ninja Stream's development is being specifically touted as a response to COVID-19. Restrictions on filming will eventually go away. So is this device relevant for other users? The simple answer to this is yes, and live events spring to mind. However, the problem is that Atomus is only going to make it available via rental houses at in excess of $300 a day. That's painful, but for big productions, a no-brainer. And they didn't give us any more pricing information, so we are a little in the dark about how much the Ninja Stream is actually going to cost those rental houses to buy, or indeed, how a rental house might actually go about acquiring units in the first place. We're trying to get some clarification on that from Atomus at our time of filming. By limiting the use of Ninja Stream so very much, they're restricting their target market to a very narrowing degree. 
The only people likely to get their hands on an Ninja Stream are larger productions with a budget to match. Where in actual fact we're probably going to see it being more of use in live events, where you need to broadcast online without a computer, or indeed for smaller budget productions that have been impacted more notably by COVID-19 restrictions, particularly financially. All of this makes it sound like we're maybe being slightly dismissive of the Ninja Stream. We're not. It's a fantastic looking product that comes built with all of the Ninja 5's monitoring recording capabilities, except RAW, as well as highly advanced and extremely capable streaming technology. Atomus are really throwing their weight behind remote working and socially distanced productions. The telling answer to all of this was given right at the end of the session in response to an audience question. Streaming technology is coming to regular Atomus models over the next year or two. So Atomus are essentially trialing the viability of a streaming device on high-end, high-budget productions before deploying that same technology on its next-generation Atom IC3 chip-enabled range. Or at least that's what we got from all of this. It's a detailed light announcement with plenty of scope for us to read between the lines. But that's it from us. If you want to find out more about the Ninja 5 Plus or Ninja Stream, get in touch using the links in the description below or leave us a comment about what you think of the new range and we'll see you in the next video.